Welcome everyone to another great episode of the Puff Drink Talk podcast. I'm your host, Conrad Schubach. I'm Dylan Wilson, Hilton Kill, in Georgia by And today we are going to be talking about Formula One since it kicked off this last weekend and had a phenomenal race in Bahrain. What an opening, what an opening race, guys. That was that was a lot of fun. It was a good race. I was drinking a beer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we should have invited you guys. I don't know if y'all were free, but it started at nine AM Central. No, Hilton did. So we went to the pub. Uh, yeah, I got like a coffee brewed beer. Oh, it was delicious. Wow. Yeah. At the uh, at the I like post. Those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. They right. had a couple maybe three different they have a cherry stout, kind of like a vanilla stout, and then a coffee one that was delicious. Yeah. We sat with the owner of the pub and and he was like and I was like, Hey, Troy, thank you for, you know, opening up for us and like well we, you kept on bugging me, so I found somebody to work. <laughs> yeah. And there was like the two of us, himself and two of his friends showed up. Exactly. And a couple that was just, you know, uh, on the street they came in and then towards the end of the race another couple came in. So he opened up for us. It's really? right on yeah. Main Street. They had like a little festival thing. It, coincidentally they do it the first Saturday of every month. So this ah, next one okay. it won't be there. But this race in Saudi, um, I believe our local time starts at eleven AM. So it won't be as early of a brew sesh if y'all want to get in and what, what time is, is it gonna start? Eleven AM I believe. Eleven AM, yeah. A run from eight to nine, so that's fine. Run to the pub. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, could go home. That would to be the a pub. Hell, yeah. yeah. yeah you could run. run from your house to the pub. It's the same distance. No, it's not. And then I'll drive you back. That from your house to the pub. That's a good. It probably. I could run. Good, I run six I miles. I run six miles. Yeah. 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 Get the fuck out of here! All right, I'll see you at the <laughs> pub then. <laughs> like, I can walk to then, the fucking pub. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so close. After to After I it. found out the cadences. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't even think about it. Just. I just keep. I, I oh know God. all the songs. I want to solve the cadences already. Right. Well, well, what's so amazing about cadences too is that you start breathing in cadences, and it and it helps your breathing as well. Yeah, that's why it. That's why cadences are there. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I will not be here. I will be in Los Angeles this weekend. Wow. What's oh, on Saturday. Yep. Yeah, fly in to Los Angeles Friday. Uh, we'll be staying in Universal City. Saturday we're going to Universal Studios. Sunday we're going to Disney. Okay. So and then Monday. Pleasure. Yeah. And then Monday the rest of the week we'll be in uh, we'll be in San Diego. So. Pretty cool. Miles stomping grounds. Yeah. Revisiting all the fun stuff. Bringing the kids. It'll be Lucas's second time going to Disney, but he was a little baby, so. I don't know, I remember first yeah. time. Really. Yeah. First time. A little, little shithead. So First time he went, it was actually for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just throw him in the stroller and be like, oh, I'm going to go do that. You want to go to Cri- uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? Like, oh, shut up, little kid. <laughs> well, we will miss you on next week's episode. Yeah. We will yeah you got to send us a subject. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, I will honorarily bow out of the subject for the next week and, and pass that torch on to George. Okay. Who... Uh, Who's uh, does a pretty good job? He does it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll try not to talk about anything too interesting so as exactly. to not exclude you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We should have a bank subject, so uh, subject of banks, you know, like, uh, the things that you don't like. like. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> things you hate. <laughs> so we can talk about talk that about when you don't come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just fall asleep to that. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so I will not be here next week, but gentlemen, enjoy, have fun with your uh. You know, doing this podcast. I was going to say fun with yourself. Have fun with yourself. We do that every night. Yeah, that's a little weird. (laughs) Um, But yeah, Formula One openings, opening ceremonies. (laughs) Jesus. I know that's going to be a short. I'm just fucking myself over on that one. (laughs) Uh, Opening ceremonies, opening race. Yeah. Uh, How was it at the pub? How, you know, describe the experience. Really cool. He has 10 TVs or so. So you can sit at the bar on the left side or the right side. There's TVs at tables over here. We sat at a table with a huge, probably 85 inch. Yeah. So your normal living room setup. But <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, our, yeah, our. both of you guys, right? Yeah, it's the same TV. We bought us um, like same week. But we we sat with a guy that does autocross and uh, he races. Uh, he has a Honda NSX, I believe. Or, no, right now he's uh, racing. Or he sold that car. No, he sold the, the, the He's Fantasy. racing on a 
uh, Porsche. It's a 911 or something? No, it's a Cayman. A Cayman? No, sorry, a Boxster. Okay. What, what was a, what, what is it? Auto? Autocross. Autocross. What is autocross? Just racing, I guess, right? Like, uh, well, I would have to show you because uh, autocross, it has like mixed circuits that have um, uh, like uh, asphalt and a little bit of a dirt. So, oh, so it's a mixture of like on road, off road, rally right. racing. Yeah. Yeah. Like but it's not really off roading because it's not that road. Like like just like yeah. a little yeah. bit of a gravel. Yeah. I think the X Games did that where they would do motorcycle races where you would do have like a dual sport mm -hmm. on road, those moto enduros. And then I miss those things. I would like to see it more often. You yeah. Know, like mixing things, you know, like just like those triathlons. You have to do three things, you know, three sports at the same time. Yeah. Decathlon, yeah. remember? Yeah. <laughs> in the Olympics, right? They yeah, Bruce Jenner. Yeah. <laughs> right? So. Shout out trans. I mean, mm -hmm. transmissions, <laughs> transgenders. <laughs> we love them all. Um, no, it was cool. The world though. needs them. The world needs them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. I guess. You're yeah. wrong. Yeah. But uh, no, it was cool. We. Um, Got kind of distracted. The guy's also like a doctor. He does like stem cell stuff. So we were talking about all kinds of shit. But it is cool being able to like. That's awesome. really cool. I think George guy, would actually. love that conversation. Oh, yeah. we were telling him you should probably come on a podcast. To, we could dive deep into some of the stuff that he does. It's really interesting. But um, a lot of it went over my head terms and things that I've never heard and breaking down like the chemical structures and the bonds of how things work. So wow. it, it took away from the race a little bit. Deep. It was a, a great conversation. Um, and then Dylan kept looking at me. And then I was like, I, I was interested in the conversation and in the race. So I had him in here because there's so many screens that I was looking at him and looking at this, the, you know, the screen just behind him. I yeah, it's like this position. So he was sitting where Conrad was. I'm here. Hilton was there. And the TV's over there. And, and, I'm and like the other TV to... was over there. And I could see the TV behind him as well, nice. paying attention to the conversation, but also watching, you know, Picking on the race. All right, I guess I'll talk. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna... you were, then, was it the guy who opened the bar for you? No, no, no. no was, okay. It's it's his just, friend. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's his friend that, you know, because the owner Super of the bar also races. Yeah. You know, they, they oh, all yeah, race. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was flashing. He was showing, you know, the branding, you see? We brand different things. He's like, yeah. and then, then I cured cancer. So what yes. about you? And yeah, like, oh, like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, uh, yeah. I did get brought up, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, was, really? I crossed the street up by, by myself for the like, first time. Living <laughs> forever. I know. And, yeah. yeah, he and his wife is working on something that will actually make you undiable. Im immortal. Yeah, we're like, so immortal? it's going to just like... Like immortal? Immortal, immortal yeah. essentially. Yeah, because we're like, oh, how will... How will that increase life expectancy? Like how long? Are we like a hundred years old? He's like, no, like forever, forever. Like potentially, Jeez. there's certain. Because I didn't ask that question. Yeah, we asked. And there's a certain jellyfish now that can live forever. It goes through the cycle all over again. Like is whatever over. like Deadpool like or just a, no, 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 no. It's not uh, like regeneration <laughs> yeah. of that sort. But it's like when if nothing it, happens cells, with you, uh, your cells is about to die. What they do is disease. They yeah. they, yeah. they you know, they, 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 they do like a phoenix, you know what I mean? They mm. come out from the ashes, like the cells, and then they... Recompose. They, yeah. There was an interesting book I read. It was uh, one of those teen novels. So it wasn't, you know... It was good, but it was one of those, you know, you're following, following like, you know, teenagers to young adults type of novel. But it was an interesting premise of the fact of, like, in the future, we advance so far as a society that we entrust an AI model as like judge, juror, and basically a executioner, and it oversees everything. Medicine gets to a point where you can jump off a building and there's like little robotic uh, things in your blood that just heal you, so you'll never die. Wow. And you can go into these pods and let's say you turn 80 years old and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna be 27 again. You go into the pod, it regenerates all of your skin and Fall cells and you go back future. but the book is called reaper so you follow this kid mm, who gets, oh yeah right who gets chosen a, to be a okay. reaper. Yeah. so their job is to go around and be like you've regenerated five times you've lived you know 400 years it's, it's time for you to die mm -hmm. and they would they would kill you in a way that the cell your cells couldn't be regenerated again 
So they would have like a virus. Kind of like thing. beheaded or something? Some a type. Shot. Yeah. Well, they would have an antivirus because you're living with a virus that is protecting you. <laughs> yes. Actually, that's what the term that he used. It's, like, it's like a virus that protects you yes. instead. Right. We're, we're so, so primitive, right? Because the way he, the examples he's bringing, right, is like far off, regenerating. And then we are thinking on how to kill the person with the methods from... This from this decade, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, like, like, exactly. The there would be probably exactly. it's just a thought, you know, like yeah. probably I don't know. There would be so many other options to do that, but we are restricted to, to that, right? So <laughs> we always restricted. But it's yeah. a good book. I, I highly recommend it. At least the first one. Um, really interesting premise, you know, that you can do whatever, and and then you have a secret society of grim reapers that go around, and hey, you had a good life of two hundred years, but. Now it's time for you to die. Like, say, I'll, I'll give you a week. Some people are nice about it. They're like, I'll be back in a week. You know, tie up all your loose ends, say goodbye to your family, but I'll be back in a week. Other people are, like, evil about it. They're like, we'll go on, they'll just go on to an airplane and just kill everyone. So it could be kids. It could be Jeez. old people. They're like, now is the time for everyone to die on this plane. And they'll just go around and killing them. I just don't want to get into this avenue because then we would spend the whole time i know i know yeah sorry i'm <laughs> right I'm, I'm like formula one car <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah. right yeah. because yeah. i would that. just comment i know yeah. i would comment Good. something and i say you know what uh, i did i did your job you see so you don't have to look bad you don't have to look bad to him <laughs> okay thank i you. look bad to him. finally finally somebody <laughs> right <laughs> but it wasn't me it wasn't because of you it was because of me because i would get coming from you george yeah. <laughs> i need to be wrangled in sometimes it's all right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. But no. Uh, did you watch the Formula One? I did not. I watched the highlights the day after. I'm just busy. Camila's working. I got the kids. I, I can't sit there for two and, and a half hour. hours. Thank you, sir. Well. Um, did you, George? I watched the just the highlights. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. It was oh. fun to watch live. Um, the beginning was very interesting. Had a good launch from Valtteri Bottas and. Yes. Good launch, and but then people. not a very good first Not a good corner. start of the race. Yes. Yeah. Good launch. And then, um, you know, interesting on qualifying and everything works. Um, yeah, the Q2 time was as fast as the pole position. Yeah, it was And it, it wasn't the same pole. driver. Yeah. On, on, on qualifying. So, um, it'll be interesting seeing going into Joe this weekend. Um, well, the differences are because Ferrari seemed just as fast in Quali in Q2, and then in Q3 they couldn't maintain that speed with no. tire wear or whatever it was. Um, track development. Um, don't maybe, know. maybe just a momentum. Hmm. You know, sometimes it's just a momentum because you know Leclerc has a different driving style. And I was telling you today. Yeah. Um, he is much deep into the braking point. Mm -hmm. uh, and and he picks so up his speed. Yeah, he picks up speed a little bit later. So he has less high speed, but he compensates on the braking. So that actually puts more stress on the braking. Um, and uh, okay. Max Verstappen is a more of a traditional racer, which is brake, turn, and accelerate to the middle of the of, the, the, apex, of the corner. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that that way you get more speed uh, in the end of the of the the straight the exit mm -hmm. of the turn. Yeah. So <clears throat> it, it's very it's very uh, interesting to see you know the driver styles. Uh, it's like um, Lewis Hamilton, for example, he doesn't open up the corners too much. He's like a tighter driver, and it's unbelievable what he can do you know speed wise by being as tight. And what happened to him in this race? I saw he finished what six, seven, the seven. Yeah, they were position. having problems. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, George Russell the same. They were just having um, issues with the uh, car. I think so. that, from what I remember, I think the battery was having issues. It either yeah. overheated or just they miscalculated something. Um, and yeah, so you, uh, at certain it, point, it was the the the, the vent duct to to cool wasn't breathing the, 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 the system. So, um, yeah, they they didn't open up it enough. Uh, so that would bring more air and then cool the system down. So they were like, 
controlling the temperature, so they couldn't use full potential power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a certain okay. point in the race where over the radio, Hamilton was like, my battery is at 1%, so I can't push. But uh, later in the race, his seat also broke. So he was kind of like moving a lot, <laughs> and his seat broke. So it Not was, like a driving wheel I sent you. Not like that. No, yeah, no, not no, that. No, 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 let's go. <laughs> The guy, the guy loses the wheel and then he goes I like on the knob. A video. Yeah. I didn't say you because it was it was on Facebook or whatever Instagram. Oh, so he's gonna be on the radio funny. like I need to change my trousers. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you commented that to me, man. Can like you imagine the, the, the driver the just wheel came just comes and he's like in the car and he was insane. like insane. You know, like he's insane. He gets it back on. <laughs> I promise, right man. Back up. I only send when I when I think it's too good because I watch it like. a 3,000 videos. <laughs> if I send you only one a day, it means that I didn't send you 2,999 <laughs> videos. Remember this. And for that, we so, thank you. Yeah, and I promise you, like, I know, like... I appreciate this. Yeah, I look at all well, the... the clapping that I did, it wasn't for the video, it was for you only sending one video. <laughs> I like <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. I only say I don't send more than one, two. Unless, like, no, 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 you can't. Gonna, I, prob I probably send you about three or four a day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Non racing stuff. And yeah, you see, but I like it. Epoxy yeah, garages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, get a lot of, we get a lot of it. When it's short, you know, like, what I'm saying is that you guys send me an eight minute about. video. <laughs> Come on, I'm no, not going to watch yeah. it. Anything over 30 seconds, I know I, yeah. I will think twice. That's why reels and shorts and stuff on Instagram yes. is so good because it's just our attention spans. Like I'll watch a quick 10 second video no problem. It's one drug after the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go from caffeine yeah. to the, the tobacco, yes, the nicotine. Right? And yesterday I was tired and then I was like, um, so I put the girls to bed. So it was like 8, 10. So I'm just going to, you know, watch some shorts. Um, and then I'm just gonna go and get a wine, and then you three know, hours later, and then wind down. Exactly that. So like ten twenty, it was like, oh, it's two hours late. Yeah, later, and it was like hooked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why don't we, we should create a social media called hook, 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 or hooked? Like, let's call it what it is. Let's call it. It's like the most honest social media of all time. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hooked. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hooked it sounds good, doesn't it? I think it does sound yeah, good. Right? You might actually be onto something with that, George. I right. like that. Hooked. Yeah. Hooked. Let me ask you a question about the about the race. Uh, wow, that is beautiful. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I yeah, need to put it in the yeah, it was Go just a, um, regarding the... Um, I've seen that... I haven't watched a full race for, I don't know, 10 years. I, I watched it from 83... A end of 82 until 2000, I watched it every single one. I remember I would recording video cassettes. Yeah. You know, like I would, I would have you know, a cassette. Yeah. Um, and I would just, because I was playing you know, on Sundays, Sunday morning, so I would have, uh, go home and watch it. So I've seen like Thank you. two decades and I see how it progressed, right? So what, ha what has happened in, regarding cameras for the past... Uh, 20 years because it has probably changed a lot and it's a different experience because I, I will confess if it's a 20 minute highlight not a eight minute highlight I think it's too it's too little but a 20 minute highlight it gave me the I was I was driving coming here it was like yeah yeah you know, I, was, I, was, I, was ex I was excited um, because it only the best moments you know like only when something action happens well, so I would say that's one of the nicer things about watching it live. It's similar to watching an NBA game or an NFL game where the commentators get a little bit more insight, especially if you haven't been keeping up with everything. On or, spot, right? Yeah, it's like they do something like, oh, that's important because of X, Y, and Z, you know? And so it gives you another insight into it. But all the new camera angles and everything, getting to watch on board while they're doing stuff here, the radio stuff right after it happens, it's really cool. There's so many cameras. You have camera inside of the helmet. You have camera. You can see through the visor. Like, yeah. It's inside of oh the God. visor. It's so the you same see as, their, it's just next to the eye. So you right? see the glare of the lights coming in through the... It's crazy. And uh, and then you have you have one camera exactly in front of where the... What's the name of the, the halo? The, the halo system. Oh, the halo system. Mm -hmm. So the camera sits in there, so it's not in the... In an interrupting uh, or blocking the vision. 
And it's a 360 Again, camera. It's a 360. So when you overtake, no way, when kidding, when you overtake, they, they they change the camera where to show the car that you are overtaking. Pretty much like Indy Race has been doing for years. Probably years. F1 released the video of the Ferrari battle there. For, it was Carlos Sainz versus Charles Leclerc, and they were showing it on that 360 camera, and it was like so fucking cool. That's awesome. They didn't yeah. show that angle live, or at live, least I missed yeah. it because we might have been talking, but watching that on the YouTube clip was really cool. And Formula One is well known for pioneering a lot of things, you know, like, mm -hmm. so so this camera inside, all this kind of things, you know, we, we can see that not everything will become popular and get scale, but we can see that, oh, but that would be cool to have it, you know, like, and because there's so much money involved in a sport, so probably it justifies all these angles and like the drones. The drones and the, the drones. Yeah. That Apple Vision. Oh, segue, man. Yeah, okay. He's, he's, he's making a connection there. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of drones. Speaking of drones, guys. <laughs> there was a, um, a Red Bull drone. It's a 350 kilometer an hour max oh, speed that was chasing the car. Thank you. Incredible. So if they could create that in a live race where they use multiple of those, because I'm sure the battery drains so fast on them. I think, show, I think they're sure. testing that. I think they're testing to incorporate it, but that would be awesome. The beginning of the video you told me that has the making off the mm -hmm. whole thing, they mentioned that. Oh, I'm not sure if, if we're going to go, we'll be able to break or if be able to, they're just saying like all the curbs you know that would affect oh, having this, yeah. this i'll have to yes. send you another one it's a longer video but you could probably skip to the last like seven minutes of the video it's um hacksmith industries and he went to the rb20 live unveiling and he had this kind of behind the scenes access to red bull and then he was able to be a part of the rba testing with the drag test against the drone and then he talked to the guys making it and they were explaining how it's almost shaped like a missile and it gets up to a certain speed and it turns and it flies this way. And when you're controlling it, like your pitch and yaw and everything, instead of it's, it turns. And so like trying to control it is a mind fuck because your controls kind of flip because the props, you know, up and downs this way, when it turns this way, it's forward and backwards. So in real time, whoever's piloting it, it's manual. It's, it's not doing anything with AI. It's a manual guy flying that that has to know how to change stuff. So they might have to figure out a more controlled way of doing that because you don't want a drone crashing into a driver mid-race but there was a camera uh, i think uh it was in france uh there was on a cable mm. right they do uh, that in the nfl but be way different on a formula one track well yeah they have that in in, in france uh racetrack and in one particular corner so as you turn the corner and then the Formula One starts going, the camera follows it and follows the same speed up until a certain point. Because it does a little like that, and then when it turns to go the other way, and then the camera stops and then comes back for the next shot. And I think uh, Canada also has a similar camera uh, in the end of the hairpin before they come to the back straight. Uh, they have a, a, a similar uh, similar camera as well. That'd be amazing if Circuits of America did that for the long straightaway strip to hairpin turn one to go Before back that other way. That'd yeah. be really cool. Just seeing that, seeing them go up the hill and then do that turn. It goes up a lot. I drove that track. It's, yeah. it's like it is steep. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't look at it. You're like, holy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my first comment on um, what did you? What were you guys are saying before I forget my point because the subject was so cool <laughs> no, yeah. was it something to do with a drone um yeah uh yeah yeah that's right that's right um i remember now it was uh the the, uh, the those the guys who were de devising the the uh, drone they mentioned no we got so close two to three meters from the guys yeah we have to be very careful not to hit the drivers yeah yeah We're very concerned about that you know, uh, especially because say there's a car on the side, out or a car the side, behind or something, and then, like that. And then the guys, air. exactly, or you know. So um, I was gonna say weather conditions will also play in fact. That will that, totally. You know? In their first test, because I mean he's wearing goggles, right? That's how yeah. he's piloting it. In their first test of it, they pull it out there, and all of a sudden it kind of disconnected from the remote a little bit, and it just went off like on its own. Like oh fuck, how do we? At three hundred fifty. 
yes. in the air. So they had it returned to home, and it kind of came back. And so it's like there's, there's little things left to iron out and get the put with technology, if they can find a way to implement like AI technology into that somehow, tracking, I don't know, but Red Bull Engineering. Morning Brew, NASA. Morning Brew mentioned that uh, two days ago about these drones, about about drones transporting people, right? Sure. And they mentioned something that at, at the Formula One, it won't be a problem, but in the day-to-day -day is, is a nightmare. That's why there are many taxis, U Uber has one. Right, well, has one a drone that takes people, you know, from here to there. I don't know if you know, guys. If you guys know that, Uber has it, but the noise. So you won't need Uber drivers anymore. <laughs> no, that's the whole. They're taking jobs. The, actually, the whole business model from Uber is exactly this. That's how that's they. Interesting. They have never made pro they, any profit until last quarter. Was it's been since 2009, so because 15 years because they're transitioning from like a manual service of yeah. cab share riding into a year a plan tech, business plan a tech company. company. Yes, same thing with Amazon. Yes, Amazon so they started using they started using human robots, and now they're testing to. So what I was saying is that the noise, electronic right? robots, the noise. That yeah, one of the reasons, like, think about close your eyes and think about ten thousand drones flying. Or, everywhere in the city yeah. <laughs> like because cars because you have to understand that when it's a car it's only play it's only on the on the girl you know in one level yes then drones you have 20 levels 30 50 100 i mean a thousand levels up right what mm, about the no uh, what about the what about the nose and, and think it about that up. if one falls how many is going to hit until it gets to the floor five six maybe more yeah the I mean, probably more. Yeah, You're because you know it's so fast. I mean, in all directions. Yeah. So uh, this is one of the reasons, like money, morning brew, uh, mentioned um, uh, how difficult it is to regulate because there are uh, investors, there are interest, a lot of people interested in that. But you're right, though. It'd be a non-factor in F1 because of how loud it is already. Mm -hmm. at least. And if it's just how many would you really need if it's just tracking at certain points during the circuit? Like maybe they'll just try and do like one or two laps per race out of 60 laps or something to keep up with whoever's in pole. Um, but all it takes is one mishap P1. for, for yes. all of it to go for, oh, for them can't. to be like, yeah. no, we're not doing it. Because you got to think about driver safety, too. You can't do too much to put the driver's But well, you know what I was thinking? I was... How cool I, would it be if they could If you get into out. this rabbit hole, look at this. I was thinking about, okay, there are like 5,000, oh, it's, it's five kilometers, right? Well, wow. From three to five, I, 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 you know. A track? I, a track, yes. From three to five. No more. Uh, yeah, it's more. Um, it depends on track, yeah. but I think the next one, I think Jetta is roughly like three point something. Yes, three to five, right? So okay. I would see the, the drones, instead of moving the whole thing, the whole direction, imagine if you separate like every... Every every half a kilometer, you have one that so, it moves only. For, this one picks anything that happens during that period, and then they would communicate. You know, like the camera would be seamless because you would be able to see 360 through because it's only one piece, right? Right. Okay. Six point one seven four. Yes. Yes. So we yeah, from three to six. Yes, that's a big one. It seems. Yeah, I would say I would say the shortest circuit would be Monaco, and it's. I think it's over three. It's over three. Yes. Yeah, but and normally a good length is five yeah. kilometers. So think about well, this. On average or and then you have drones that would communicate. This drone would only drive for half a mile. The other one would half a mile. Hmm. And you would be be filming three hundred six because they would communicate. That is actually an interesting idea. Because it would be static, maybe static, because you'd be able to see two hundred fifty. Uh, because it's how every kilometer you're gonna have like three, right? Because one here, one in the middle, another one. So probably if you look like that, it's going to be 250 meters. So it's very close. So they I think use, this is more for the future. They use helicopter for that uh, for a mm -hmm. long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's before. I mean, we already saw the potential with Apple Vision Pro being able to watch it too, watch a live race, and then get to see it like right here, the actual track and all of them going around, different colors of teams. It's going to get really cool. The future of F1. And, and like think about multiple transmission within yeah. the same transmission. Which also coming the future of F1, Saudi Arabia unveiled that they want to build a new racetrack featuring a 20-story drop. And what? it almost looks like something on a Mario Kart. 
Yeah. Um, this is their plans to build some uh, concept <sighs> pictures of the track. It's going to go up yeah. on this huge. I think they want to put like an amusement park, like roller coasters that you can ride, like a coaster and be alongside the track. Here. The track is on top of that. The track thing. is on top of this up here. They go up. <sighs> That's speed racer stuff, right? There. It, it is. It is. Isn't that incredible? Great like, idea. What I it's a way to spend their fucking money. I what mean, I that'd be awesome. They have to have good solid walls. But look, and, and nets, you know, flying over that to, to hold if somebody like crashes and flies. Yeah, and it's probably more expensive to keep it from the nature than to build it. You know, like in three years, the maintenance is probably crazy. Look at yeah. that. I wonder how much that would cost. This is your, instead of buying seats, swimming pool on top. this glass swimming pool watching them vroom, right underneath. Going by. That'd be insane. <laughs> Man, this is unbelievable. Wow. I will tell you, let, let me tell you, you, our listeners and viewers, right? So, uh, you see what you just see here, right? So, comment on this. Yeah. Because this is amazing. You know, another thing, Dylan, that I've, I was thinking? Mm-hmm about pay-per-view imagine that okay so all the all of them would have a camera inside and then you put your pro, your, your your vision pro and then you pay per view okay i want to i want to i want to pay for uh i don't know verstappen, verstappen. And, 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 and hamilton and then you could you would click and you drive like this and you click think about the experience the well, the you look this way and then you see one uh, yes one cockpit and then you look that way another cockpit that's it you look you know straight ahead and then you see I the whole circuit and then you yeah. look down and you see the conventional cameras oh yeah i'm not saying that i would pay all the time but i would definitely try this one oh it's uh it's thirty dollars fifty dollars thirty dollars for one experience i mean if you pay every month i don't i don't know but it's a great I don't know, scale position. could make it cheap. Yes. Scale could make it cheap. You could make it like a uh, monthly subscription, like you know, fifteen bucks. People yeah. don't bat an eyelash to spend sixty dollars to watch the UFC fights. Yes. Granted, they're not every weekend. But yes, you're right. Because of that, they could make it a little bit cheaper. Um, yeah, that'd be an interesting thing to. It's to look one into. investment that will keep on bringing revenue for years to come. Exactly. So if they plan the revenue to pay it off and bring them 400,000 return of investment over the, the course of five years with so many subscriptions, right? It could become like a $15 thing. Well, and that's and that's it. And so many people would do that too. If Formula, <laughs> yeah, right? if Formula One wants to be even more of a heavy hitter and into like, listen, we're going to go deep, deep pockets with with our races, you have to go technology. Everything technology based. And something like this is definitely the Just future. A, an idea, right? So, because <clears throat> we, we discussed the other day about this Vision Pro, and then yeah. I haven't stopped thinking of all the possibilities. And for I just thought about telling you guys this be about awesome. Formula One, Formula One, because I thought about football too. Think about it, you have the ball, and then you are the guy. And then yeah. you, you will notice one thing that is that we know, but we kind of don't know. You see how Messi scores the, those goals? He makes it look so easy. Mahomes makes it look so easy. Think about with those glass, with those visions, right? You you just understand You're how it. difficult yeah. it is. Yeah. And then you say, oh, okay, now I see why it's different. I have a respect. I have respect, you know. Like Madden or the NCAA games, when you like go and do like a replay, instant replay, you can control the camera, put it anywhere on the field, change the angle. Imagine watching that on Vision Pro and like getting to, I want to be, you know, Justin Jefferson. And when you turn your head, like you're just, wherever you look is what the field looked like. Yeah. From kind of his perspective. You're like watching that ball come in from up here, you know? That would be incredible. Like the view, the play, the view. Yeah, so, like you don't see the ball. so yeah, so in that case, I would probably call the blinders. Not as blind, because then I would know if the guy really saw it or not. Yeah, right. that is true. That is true. So you see the experience where it goes, and it's just the beginning, right? Because we can go crazy in here, like because now we are talking about guys that we'll, we'll only we can only have one attention at a time, right? Like you can only think about and feel about one thing at a time. What if in the future have an experience that provides us two? But you, you can divide your attention in two. 
Well, let me put it that way. So you you're wearing the goggles, right? And then you go like, okay, Max Verstappen is twenty five bucks, but Pierre Gasly, Pierre Gasly, it's two dollars. Yeah. Okay, I'll do Pierre. <laughs> yeah. You may start sympathizing with the guy. Yes. Well, you know? yeah. And then you're listening to everything he's saying and everything the team is saying, telling back to him, like. Not only the camera is connected, but also the audio that the driver is connected. Yes. Right? And then you go like, oh, I'm so sorry for, for Gasly. And then I've always been shitty on him because he's not a good driver. Actually, he seems to be a good driver. Good driver. The problem is, yeah, he turns left and the car goes right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, uh, while we were speaking, while you were saying this, look how excited we are, right? Yeah. So think about how excited Conrad you would be at the moment you are seeing you're driving the car right right how is your heart oh accelerated right how is your brain like mm. what what amped up and wired thinking you're, that you're right there with them right perfect mo moment for betting imagine if you could see here bet you you're right there and say you know i'm gonna bet because you're so excited yeah that's gonna be legal because you know what you are it's it's gonna be legal because <laughs> you're so excited you know you know go forget about the legal part of it just enjoy the fun <laughs> just enjoy the fun I, I even enjoy thought about it's gonna be business legal. here yeah betting business bb that would be my my second second company here i'm just i'm just saying this <laughs> <flexing. I'm> just... <laughs> Number one's B doing so good. Yeah. Number, I need number two. <laughs> BB. Right on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So BB, betting business, uh, definitely. Patent pending. Yeah. You see? So <laughs> imagine and, like you know what? But I mean, that's that's just more more angles, more more data, more analytics, things that are coming in that you can you can make a better, more educated guess you know, with your money. I like that that's what Amazon Prime's been doing with football in general it's like all the statistics and extra analytics and real-time data that they're showing it's driven by ai so there's no reason that couldn't be incorporated into formula one different aspects of it well and it wasn't until recently i think this last year where they started especially on football saying like uh percentages of if you're going on fourth down percentage wise how much has that been successful for this team this year and in the past under this head coach? With like the you, player with the you, left hand. Exactly. What, on what, the Thursday it, night football games, did you ever granular. watch the uh, Prime Vision view where it would kind of like track the players and stuff? It could predict if the defense was going to rush and like send somebody to sack the quarterback. Like if they had an edge rusher and an extra guy going based off where they were lining up like in real time, that computer's reading stuff like that. Which is insane. It's giving you, like, just someone who's n just watching the, the game casually, maybe doesn't understand the rules, it kind of gets you more into it because you understand it more. Yep. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Hilton picked up football faster than anyone I've ever met for someone who's never watched it and only yeah. watched two games. He that's kept, true. like, commenting during the Super Bowl. It was like, oh, this, this, oh, they're doing that, oh, that's that penalty. I'm going, like, what the hell? It's like talking to an old pro who's well but like a proud parent to be honest yeah. like I got him like, oh, yeah. everything he does like oh, look at look at a cigar like he but gets I'm, into yeah, it yeah, yeah that is true. I, I'm yeah. the Super Bowl yeah, yeah he's got I had only watched one game that's what I'm saying I had a intern intense uh internship with you guys oh that is true so that is true yes yeah and there could have been days where he didn't want to hear anything about football, but I'm in here fucking talking about it. So. Um, well, he's a menace. Yeah. He's a menace. He's a football menace. Dennis and now he's doing the same with Formula One. It's like, hey, Dylan, I enjoy Formula One, okay? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, put on a conversation a little bit because, yeah. uh, you know, you're coming off a little bit too hard. You know? <laughs> I think that's Teaching me the... stuff that I don't know yeah. on Formula One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, listen, you can't teach me something I don't fucking know. I've been watching um, it for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but man. I think we share a commonality in where I, when I get into something, I just get sucked into it. Ooh, and it's almost ooh. all I can think about. That's all and my wife complains about. Immersion, right? Yeah. Yeah. When you get totally in, you go too deep. I dive like, deep. I'm deep. so sorry. Yeah. Yes. I have to cut an inch off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I go balls deep. To <laughs> I, it's just... Uh, it's a gift and a curse, you know? Yeah. It's nice when you're learning stuff, and then, you know, for our loved ones, it probably is a little bit frustrating, but it's just, I get so immersed. 
Look, getting back to the AI predicting that you're talking about for Formula One and for uh, football, right? Because for the betting yeah. stuff, for the media. yes, um, yeah. I'm just saying, like getting. You we're just racing. Uh, we're racing that tomorrow, right, Dylan? So George is gonna have to buy from us. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the BB. <laughs> oh, BB. Yeah, Betty. Yeah, exactly. So, but uh, what I was trying to say is, um, you see, the, it, everything is becoming more and more predictable, right? Because we can anticipate that, right? Yeah, the intelligence is going around. Yeah, so, and then we think, I think as a community, as a society, you know, regarding sports, look, look, look what all the sports are doing. Because we know we are going to that direction. That you can predict more subjective subjective rules are being introduced to the game. For example, um, the blue card in soccer. Yeah, it's, it's gonna make it terrible because it's already difficult to decide. It's a, it's very subjective to decide if you know. It's, is it really a red? Is it a, is it a yellow? Wasn't it nothing? Is it like a straight red, two yellows? It's already hard. Okay, because now the the. The, uh, the referees, they go there and sometimes they just warn. They don't give a card. But with the three cards, the behavior is going to change. Yeah. Because he has more options, right? So he's going to be showing much more cards, right? So what is the blue card? I don't know about it's it. It's a blue card, yeah. So now, um, if depending on the how strong the tackle is, you get out for 10 minutes. Oh, so to, they put you on the bench, like uh, just like fight, ho hockey, and hockey, just like hockey, yeah, yeah, fighting hockey for two minutes, you're out. Yeah. So do you understand? What I'm saying like, uh, and now uh, every time, every time there is something, uh, there's a play like Shaq doing whatever he does. They they created uh, a rule in, in 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 basketball that is more subjective. So I expect this trend to keep going, you know, even for Formula One. Formula One, they change the rules quite often, right? So it's not like Sometimes even soccer. like race by race, yeah, it right? feels like. Yeah. So you see that it's super Because they, they have a, a, a briefing and then on the briefing they do agree on things for the particular track. This is amazing, I love that. But it is yeah, subjective yeah. too, that where is something cool. happens and it's subjective, the penalty they get. Sometimes it's a five second penalty, sometimes it's a 10 second penalty, and, mm -hmm. and it could be something kind of what everybody deems to be minor. And some 10 second penalty like that seems kind of egregious all yeah. the penalties are still there but it's all agreed uh, you know, prior to the race and that has been forever like that since the 80s and uh even in karting when i used to race uh it was like that there was a briefing at the beginning and then uh they would explain the rules and what was valid and what was not and depend on the track it depends on the track because some tracks they would have like um uh let's say if the track has a, a wide uh, escape area, but it has a concrete wall somewhere, just because of the layout of the track, it's an old track, it's a traditional track, they don't want to take it out. So the penalties on that particular track, on that particular corner or whatever, will be a little bit uh, more, strict. more strict than another track that has the same area that it doesn't have that uh, concrete wall. Ah, you know I mean? okay. So, and everything is agreed upon, you know, prior the, I think it's prior the qualifying. I think it's prior the qualifying. Yeah, if I remember well, when I was racing. Yeah, it's before the qualifying. So, before you do the qualifying, you go knowing all the rules for the race. Because also affects, you know, your mindset for the qualifying. So, basically. Because you know, coming into that corner, if you push someone out you're you're instantly going to get a huge yeah. 10 you know 10 15 20 second yeah. penalty because of what you did and then of course there are things that happen that is not talked about you know like um schumacher you know, like pushing rubens barrichello to the wall yeah. right too much and then that happened on a different a different track uh, with i think alonso and another uh, another uh, driver that pushed alonso out um, and it wasn't as seen as bad as it was with mm -hmm. Barcelo because Perception he got more squeezed <laughs> into the wall. Do you know what I mean? And very dirty uh, piece of track. And then the other one was just like, you know, uh, it, it was just grass. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit different. So there's so many things that, you know, happen. And it's like, okay, so now it happened. So they have to talk about it, you know, the following races. Races, so there's like so many things to look at, right? Hmm. Interesting, yeah. 
Really? Um, yeah, so I expect for any sports to be more and more, like even going further into that, going wild. Like, oh, there will be, be a wild card, like a wild card that during this minute you can do this, this and this, you know, like there will be, I, I can see that gamifying to make it more um, less predictable. Yeah, this is what I would say. That. Oh, I see what you're yeah. saying. Now the rules are going to become, the, the data has caught up to a point where it's becoming so predictable. Yes. Now the rules have to change to become to kind of take that out of it and be unpredictable. Yes. You know, like, we should learn from from what? What is the most unpredictable thing on Earth? A racquetball. All right? right. So they should learn from... <laughs> <laughs> they should learn from a racquetball. They, yeah, so, try uh, to study that ball. In sports, in sports, <laughs> yes, it's racquetball. Yeah. 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 That ball is unpredictable. Right? <laughs> yeah, so, so I will tell you, like, that's probably the future, you know, like, yeah. analyzing that ball. One day... You see how there's a guy in 2020, 2024 who, who said that yeah. there would be a study about that. Unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> and untrackable. Untrackable. Yeah, yeah. Well, going into this race this weekend, uh, what are your thoughts? Who are we liking? What uh, is well, the overall favorite? Let's take uh, Verstappen out of the <laughs> uh, you know, equation here. And... Uh, the pace that Ferrari has shown, and for a matter of fact, I think this race is not as bumpy as as Abu Dhabi. Um, so I think uh, uh, not that Bahrain, right? Uh, you know, this I think it's going to be easier for the Mercedes. Mm, so okay. they could present a little bit of a better challenge for Ferrari. So. That could potentially release the Red Bulls a little bit further. So Red Bull could get uh, first and second just because Mercedes is going to be a little bit faster and then Ferrari is going to have to look ahead and back. So hmm. Lando Norris said that um, this track is a little bit more suitable for their car as well, for McLaren. Oh, so that would bring a third a fourth in. player for the second spot, which is... Which they're already battling with Aston Martin and Alonso. So, I mean, that midfield is going to be pretty competitive, which is kind of what happened in Bahrain a little bit, where that's why you saw Red Bull get so far ahead. So, I, see, I could see it being similar. But this track, I think you can carry some more speed through more sections of the track. So. True, yeah. It seems to be a speedy one, right? So, in, what's the current situation right now? Because um, I remember during for when some cars are so, when you have a disparity between the best and the worst it's very common to go to go rounds like to go shoot three you no, go um, and lap them lap, you yeah. lap them right so lap uh, cars lap cars how there is was, it going right now there was no lap cars on last race See, that's uh yeah and i believe it was the first opening race either in a very long time or in the history of f1 where there was no retired cars. yes every single car really so you see reliability predictability Right, so but they did change something not too long ago with the DRS, right? Like you can use it more frequently during the you race. can open the DRS on the first lap now in the opening lap, in the opening lap, and uh, after a safety car, uh, this the, on on the beginning of the second lap is already available. Ooh. You know, that increases opportunities for overtaking, and you have to be within a second, one second of the car in front of you to yeah. get access to the yeah. driver detection system. Yeah. yeah, that's been like that for a long time. Oh, wow. But yeah. yeah. And, right. So, what's uh, which one is the worst team right now? Or uh, um, and worse is not the that's not the I right question. Like that Chinese company. No, it's the French. So if we look, I mean, just facing it off the very first race um, in last place, it's a. A lot the of Alpine, teams that yeah. didn't score any points, but it would be Alpine, the French team. Yeah. Challenging Alpine. for the last place is Renault's. Williams and Alpine. Alpine, uh, okay. Alpine has more money than Williams. Um, but uh, Williams, I think, is going to finish the year better. Better. Yeah. I, I would think so. I, I am... My personal opinion, I think they just have a better driver yeah. now. We're getting on. old, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm actually interested in that. Yeah. 
So this could be this could be interesting to follow, like the difference between the you know the top teams versus those. Um, this is why I think competition is important. You know, like when when you have more, if you have like as you mentioned, McLaren, Mercedes, and Ferrari, right, fighting for the spots, it makes way more interesting. Okay, that, you know, this gonna. It's a tiny difference, though. You know, uh, it's only one driver that is. You know, just Max, Max Verstappen, you know, using that package that Red Bull gives him with his driving style, which is very traditional driving style, right? right? He, he's, he's been on a driving school forever, right? Yeah. So he has a traditional driving style. And that drive, driving style of his, uh, it gives him the edge with that particular car. So... Uh, even the second car, the second Red Bull car, will be, you know, brought to that pool of... So we do have, I would say, seven cars fighting for second place. Uh, but Lewis Hamilton and George Russell, which is not bad, they could, you know, sneak a first place if they get the... Uh, the power right with the car. I'm, I don't discard them it's just because I know the potential of that car. Where? So, oh, sorry, I, know, I was going to say, so let's do first, second, third, pole position, first place, second place, and then we'll, we'll let's go into the constructor who's going to, you know, which team is going to be the oh, constructor. Oh, picks of the week? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do our, yeah, drivers of the week, picks yeah. of the week. Oh, that was another fun thing. Live, we could vote for the driver of the day, and I did. Yeah. Oh, it was cool. Carlos Sainz Jr. was the driver of the day. I saw, I saw huh. his, uh, his over I voted for him. Yeah. He had a good race, yeah. I... That, there is no ruling out Verstappen in first place. Yeah, yeah. Just so. because right now, that's how it's looking. They don't make a mistake on setting the cars up. Um, but... I, I think George Russell could, you know, get second on this race. Yes, and every, I think every okay. driver has that confidence that they're going to, you know, get P1. But he said without the little issues of overheating and stuff, he could have been much more competitive for P2. Um, I, think think Leclerc, know, right? I think Leclerc will be third. Who, you, yeah. know, you know who I'm going to pick, right? No, who? No, based on the way of that. Verstappen? Verstappen is the first, four, of course, but who's going to be the second? His partner. Yeah. his partner, yeah, his partner, yeah, his partner, because you know uh, the With car is so Sanchez, far. Right? Um, yeah, Perez. 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 Yeah. Perez. Yeah. Yeah. Checo. Checo. So Sorry. Would, yeah, <laughs> I would say that I would I would bet on him. Yeah. Yeah, especially now it is in the beginning. If if everything stays the same as the way I watch it, right? It's yeah. very common in the this teams win much more one twos. In the beginning of the of the year, because yeah, the other the other teams are catching up, and it takes some time to catch up, you know. Like um, so, I think Perez is going to score. He's going to be very high up in the, in the next two or three races. Yeah, I think I agree with Hilton. I could see Leclerc in a P two, and then uh, maybe P three. You said P three. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. I could see him P two, and, and Russell. I think a foot from yours, Russell and P three. Yeah. Pettis, Leclerc, Leclerc and it, Russell. I, I'm and thinking that as well. So it's yeah. like, it could be either that. But, I mean, it's interchangeable with really Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. I mean, he is really driving. Like I like he has him. something to yes. prove. I don't know and, if London uh, Auto is a, will be on podium. It could happen, but I don't think. You know, no, just I'm, saying to make it interesting for our viewers. I, I could think. see Norris, like, let's say Hamilton P4. Mm -hmm. For sure. It could be Norris or potentially... I would say also Czech one and... Well, Czech would be... P5 and P4 North. with Hamilton. Mm -hmm. There. And then Norris and Alonso. Norris, Alonso, so yeah. Betis. So, and, and, and... Leclerc. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say... Uh, Perez is going to come... P1? P1. Okay. P2, Louis Hamilton. In P3... Uh, Verstappen? No. Verstappen doesn't qualify. Sure. Something happens to him. <laughs> Something like happens okay. to him. Uh, what's uh, Hamilton's... Uh, George Russell. Yeah, Russell. Russell. Thank yes. you. I don't know why I was so, blanking on his name. So, yeah. this race <clears throat> last year in 2023, 
um, P1 was Checo. Yeah. It was Perez. Something happened in quality that I don't know, but for whatever reason, don't I don't remember. Verstappen ended up uh, P15 to start the race, and he finished in second place. Second, he came all the way back. Yeah. So he likes this this place. Mm. So if he qualifies well. But the R12, which is um, the car that they drove last year, is the most dominant car of all times in Formula One with 96% of race miles. RB19 or the R12? Yeah, the 19. Yeah, they only lost one race. One race. Between the two which, of them. Which, yeah. which one? Last year's Red, Red Bulls, Bulls. RB19. Red Bulls. Can you believe... 21 out of 22 races. Can you believe that it's a Honda? They're, Engine? They're racing on Hondas and you have Ferraris, McLaren, Mercedes. It's not... Uh, yeah. That's That's the thing. It's like... Um, you should never, ever take Ronda out of the picture because the second most dominant car ever in history was the MP4-4 uh, 1988 McLaren Senna? that Senna and Prost drove. And in 16 races, they won 15. 1988, right? Yeah, yeah. 1988. 15 out of 16. With a yes. Honda engine. Yeah. So Honda is always up there, man. Well, and it's so interesting because you if, have you look, Senna. if you look Bro. at if you, but you had at, Prost and Senna, he could have been driving a tractor. That might have <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. Having Prost That's and Senna is the same as having Alonso and and Hamilton, or Alonso and Verstappen, or yes, uh, or Verstappen two, and Hamilton. Two you know what I mean? Yeah, they're two greats. Yes. Yeah. But I was gonna say the flip side to that. You look at NASCAR. What are the top NASCAR? Motors like top top ones, top drivers. Ford, Toyota, 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 Toyota for the most part. Yeah, Toyota's dominant. What a company, huh? The freaking Japanese man. They and that's what, a company. that's, that's yeah, what I'm good. saying. And I, I'm, I'm wondering. I'm going to predict next two or three years, Toyota's going to make an engine and make a Formula One team. That'd be interesting. They've been part of well, a Formula One before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sauber, but never invested. I think has some much. connections to oh, BMW, really? and I think 2026. Yeah, Sauber used to be. Audi has a team yes. coming in, so we'll have some more German competition too. Yeah, coming. I was gonna say, where is BMW and and they're Audi? Not they're not they, in right they now. They bought Sauber when Peter Sauber wants to re- wanted to retire, and then it was BMW Sauber team, uh, and then the Brazilian guy bought the team. Uh, and from BMW, no, no. Uh, Sauber sold the Brazilian guy that sold to BMW, and, and Sauber name was still on. And Sauber is still on. Sauber is still on, but they've changed the name a couple of times since then. Now they're the Steak, or uh, yeah, Kick, Kick, mm. Kick Steak. Like is another sponsor for them. So yeah, okay. they probably they would they use they Ferrari, have a Ferrari engine. engine yeah, yes. oh, the Ferrari yeah. engine. Yep. Okay. Or it's a pretty good engine, by the way. Right, right. Um, yeah. Haas is using the Ferrari. I'm just well. curious what makes, you know, like those companies come like back and forth, like leave last year's. Formula One and get back to Formula One. Yeah, no, you know, that's like, a very good question. Yeah. Well, do you understand? Like, how they, look, they look into the marketing and, and, and it's like if you win a race, next day they sell tons of cars. Yeah. Tons. But but so why is so I mean to that point why would BMW why would Audi kind of be like ah eh, we're gonna we're gonna sit this couple of years out I'm GM for Christ's sake why don't why yeah. not Ford and yeah. Fiat GM already invests so much into uh, GT cars Grand Tours all right uh, uh, okay. like for example uh, Ford rally, Ford and GM they do a lot of um, GT cars. They do rallies, yeah. Um, they are known in the industry. Like Ford always had a great engine partner with the Japanese uh, um, company that used to do, based in based in UK, right? So it's a Japanese plant in UK that would get Ford engines and then uh, work uh, the, their magic. And I know exactly which one it was because my mom and dad had a Ford Taurus and I remember that vehicle because the back seats were facing backwards. backwards. So you could look out the back window. But it was a Yamaha engine, mm-hmm. but it was developed in the UK or manufactured in the UK. Yeah, but it was cool. a Ford. It was a Ford with a Yamaha engine from the UK. Yeah. <laughs> and Ford owns Mazda. I don't think 
Uh, Ford uh, owns Mazda. Yeah. Get the hell out of here. I didn't know that. For a long time. I know because I worked for Ford for a little while because I worked for Jaguar Land Rover. Yeah. And Ford owned Jaguar Land Rover as well. Who, who owns Volvo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who owns Volvo? The Swedes? I don't the know. The Chinese. Chinese. Since 2010. Yeah, but they bu- they bought it from Ford, probably. Ex- yeah, yeah, they bought yeah, Volvo. Volvo, Volvo was sold, Ford. Uh, f- exactly, for two years or three years. Yeah. And then uh, the Chinese bought it. Really? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, so uh, this kind of things, you know, like a friend of mine, he said he, he was crazy about Volvos, right? He had like four or five Volvos. And then when 10 years or 15 years ago, when he figured it out, it was Chinese, he, he changed. Huh. He said, no, I won't have a car. Well. You shouldn't do that based only on race or countries, okay? So it's just that I'm just saying that he, this is what he did. You know, he didn't trust at that time the Chinese, and now I don't know. 15 years later, yeah, years, yeah. If Volvo is, I'd like right. to see a Chinese company get into Formula One. I think they they would have a lot of money because they do have money available, right? Yeah, and and it would be interesting to see. It you wouldn't, you would not be bad. You would not be in bad. China. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. What? In China, they built like a town that's just like Paris. They put like an Eiffel Tower and everything. Mm-hmm. And now it's like a ghost town. But <laughs> yeah. they've got money. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, I think it would be interesting to see. You know yeah. what I mean? The, there are, there's so many people there. And they, you, you get intelligent people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it would be interesting. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like um, Porsche, Porsche, you know, it's not in Formula One, and it used to be a yes. long time ago. Yeah, Porsche, I'd like to see. I'd and like it, to see it would be great, but the thing is, Porsche is not as as big as a company, no. right? And you, you do need a lot of money. And then Ferrari, um, you know, it's owned by Fiat, which is huge, right? So that's why they have plenty of money because right. they sell cheaper cars. You know, to put under the expensive cars. But if not, they wouldn't be in Formula One. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ferrari, the inception, they sold street cars to fund racing. Whereas some other racing companies, you know, made street cars with that. That was their whole purpose, is just racing. Yeah. You know, McLaren has a, a, a street, a uh, road car. Yeah. But they were, they, before, they were just a racing car. And then they made, you know, a street car. But, you know, their business is racing. And once you have that reputation, you're, there's no coming back from it. Yeah. Once you have, like, a racing reputation, like, that's what you're known for, and then you go, like, oh, I got a, I got a four-cylinder. Yeah, exactly. Like 40 miles to the gallon. Yeah. It's going to cost you $80,000. Nobody, yeah, nobody's going to be like, oh, you know. Do you know what uh, Formula One is a four-cylinder, 1.6 engine? In that, in 1.6 engine. And look what I wrote down. How the, the V12, yeah, V12, V10, V8, and, and how V6. V6, and then now it's a four cylinder. And it's unbelievable. And how fast they drive. You know, they unbelievable. Go. And that is and that is competition and technology advancing that. <laughs> that is that is like uh, putting difficulties, right? right? So the, the regulations bring difficulties so to make the cars lower. But the engineers... Uh, great minds so that's why I say throw trash in the ocean the yeah. engineers will find a solution like that just like that no absolutely absolutely I, because they that's 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 the, the true example of like how a four cylinder car produces 600 yes. horsepower and uh, 700 horsepower 800 horsepower how big was the first discats you know like for computers, the, the five and a half. Yeah, how yeah, five and a floppy disks? How big they were? Yeah. And then uh, I remember chips. my mom worked in, you know, like in a kind of a computing company back in Brazil in, in the seventies. So right at the entrance, there were like this gigantic. They keep it like part of the, you know the the you know uh, when you get to the company, right? So right there, you, you see those machines, uh, cool. like all the and then the not a museum, but just like big wall. With history. every single, what's that? Showing like the history. Yes, like every single piece they used it from cassettes to the, you know, to LPs discs, to you know the CDs and, and everything, and then gets just to the to the, the cloud. Now they are involved the cloud. Yeah. So it's just interesting to see this, you know, how it, how it evolves, how it, it 
it becomes smaller and smaller. But it gets to a point that you remember that, oh no, the cell phone now is too small. It was like getting big, big smaller, 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 smaller. Then, no, Sorry, you know what? I think we should magnify. So yeah. it's hard to find, like some of my friends- well, That's what they use. They don't like yeah. using big ones like this, some of my friends. They, they, they do they prefer, prefer the smaller, yeah. of course, yeah. I've got a big hand, so it's easy for me to, to use this one. But this, they, they prefer the small ones. But the, the thing is, the phone the these hobbits. days, yeah. But the phone these days <laughs> is more than just a phone. It's, it's a screen that you yes. watch stuff in it. And like, changed, example, the needs changed. Right. I I was late to um to the AO house to the, to the pub, so I I put the transmission in the car as I was driving, and then you know, just being lucky, I was stopping a traffic light. As the, the light went out, and then I saw the start of the race because I was stuck in the, you know, two minutes on freaking traffic light. <laughs> and then I watched the start without, I didn't lose anything, but I was right. hearing it through the uh, you know, Bluetooth. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's bigger just because now it's, just, it's not just a phone. Because if, if it was a phone, you know, we could just have a, something that you put in your ear and then, you know, constantly. Yeah. And then you use your your watch, you know. Neuralink, man. Neuralink, oh, Neuralink Fusion Pro. Fusion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is your third position? Uh, for me, it's Paris, Leclerc, and Russell. Russell. Okay. Yes. That's your P one, P two, P three. Yeah, because you don't think Verstappen is podium. No, no. Oh no. No, Verstappen. Will be, I thought. I thought we we agreed it. Oh, so then you. No, have, I put yeah, Verstappen yeah. first. Because no, I put it's Verstappen, Perez. Oh, Verstappen, Perez, and Leclerc. Leclerc. Yeah. And, then and Russell, Russell, Russell fourth, fourth, just missed yes. Okay. So yeah. I, I have Perez, Hamilton, and Russell. Okay. That's my P1, P1. Uh, P2. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. that would be, very close. That would be, fourth place. What, do you think London Norris could do it? I do you think, think uh, Carlos Sainz. Sainz. Carlos. I think, I think Carlos Sainz. That would Sainz. be huge for Mercedes if Red Bull didn't finish one and two. Yeah. And you had Red Bull one, but then Mercedes two, three. Yeah. I just have and a feeling... I don't know what it is. The second position Close, in yeah. the construction. It's just the beginning, but it would get but exciting. But it's fun to watch, yeah. you know? That's, I yeah. think, what's fun to watch, because Red yeah, Bull is going to continue to, to go away. So watching that fight for two and three is going to be what I'm looking for. Especially the first four or five races. You see, they, they will catch up. So, as, as a noob, mm -hmm. how when do they start kind of implementing those upgrades? How, how late into the season? Um, in Europe, when uh, when the, ra the first race in Europe. Europe. Normally there's a break, get, right? There's a yeah, like three week um, break. Or yeah, in um, in Hungary, normally they get the biggest upgrade. They receive smaller parts every single yes. race. Every race, like but like the, you know? the, yeah. the biggest transforming yes. uh, engine, yeah. yeah, like transforming the car almost completely, is in the, the hung first race. Hungarian. In the Hungary ring. Things haven't changed that much. No. Te it's... Just technology changed there, yeah, because I can see you're taking it's the same. I mean, not the same. It's <laughs> easy to transport, you know, all yeah. of the packages. You know what I mean? What would that be? So they're going to go Saudi, Australia, Australia, Japan, China. China. So there's China a little States. break for a couple weeks between here and Australia from the 7th to 9th to the 22nd to the 24th. Then two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Japan, they're bringing China back. This will be the first since um, COVID. Uh, Miami. So they actually could bring up grades to Italy. Italy yeah. will be the first in Europe. Uh, but the huge the one normally is the, the Hungary, Hungarian. Ring. Yeah, the Hungarian. The, Might be late. The Belgium is the Belgium. No, Belgium is far from Russia. No, uh, the Hungary, right the before, right before Spa. which is July, because that takes a little while. It, it takes a lot. First race, they look at each other's cars, and they're like, "Oh, they're doing this way, that, that way." So you need about six months to develop the thing, you know, or four months to develop the thing. So we're talking about July. Okay. Yes. No. So how many races until Hungary? Um, we've had. You we'll have yeah. one, five, nine, ten, eleven. So yeah. eleven more. So it's so like twelve, half. Yeah. Yeah, halfway point. Yeah. Interesting. But I don't know this year because I think next year is the bigger is the, is the bigger regulation change. Um, Correct. Yeah. Car design change and whatnot. They might change the wing because uh, GP two now has like a oval uh, wing. Um, mm -hmm. 
So yeah, they look way different. <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna go to Circuits of the America this year? Stand outside and watch. Those tickets are expensive, but I'd love to. Yeah. If I'd love if to. we do put the money together because it's freaking expensive, we can go. If not, we can go to the pub and watch. Uh, the the next question: Can we use your company to buy these tickets? That was my. That was gonna be my question. Okay. As promotion, know. promoting to to us. If you promote to us, you can use it. It could, it could be a tax write-off. Yes, exactly. That, that's you what can I'm edit saying. this out and not put it in YouTube, but it could be a tax write-off as. Oh I'm my God! I'm don't, don't put work for me. I'm 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 leaving it on. I, I don't know. I don't know if that would be justifiable, it's, but um, twenty five percent off. Until I'm really? to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. As of now, I don't think it's as feasible as we'd like it to be. But by October, circumstances may change. Yeah. Where's the other? How many in the US do you have it now? It is expensive. Uh, three. Yeah, I don't, Miami. I've been. I've been. Kind of also, uh, it's the, free, it's the most expensive one in the calendar, almost. Three. You know, Vegas, Vegas is cheaper. And Vegas. Vegas is cheaper than... Uh, than I would love to go to Vegas. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to watch that night, though. I think it would be so boring. I don't know, a night race just... It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, it's the sphere and everything. Yeah, there that's kind of cool. You're, yeah. And you brought in one of the topics that I haven't that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, notice that he says, oh, how long? Oh, I, I can't remember when the races at night started. Was in East? Singapore. Yeah, it was six o'clock, right? But, six, but six when was it? Was it 15 years, 10 years ago? Oh, no, when the first race yes. started? Oh, we would have to look back, but I don't remember. Uh, but I really don't remember. Yeah, I would say, I, I would say that 10, 15 years ago, okay? So this is a this is a change because maybe two thousand eight. So maybe, maybe you see yeah. So sixteen. You see. So think about this. Uh, maybe a pilot, one of the drivers, has better vision than the others. At night, At night it's or way more complicated. So that adds subjective subjectivity well, to for me. Topic. For me, it would be difficult with the, all the lights because I have you know. And it's a lot of lights, eyes, right? So I've, I've seen it's a lot of lights. Yeah. So it, this is what I predict to the future. More nature involved, like man versus nature, you know? Because you said that some some races, you know, like some tracks are bumpy, some some are not. So that changes completely the way you drive. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that's why uh, Hamilton seat broke because they're like exactly bottoming all. So think day. about that. Maybe if you put it on purpose. I, I, yeah. I, I sorry to sorry to interrupt your train of thought here, but I saw a meme where it said uh, oh. Hamilton called in is like, "Oh, my seat broke," and the yeah. and the crew came back and said, "Well, then fucking drive a Ferrari." That <laughs> 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 was funny. In due time, that was funny. In yeah. time. This next, it'll be a night race as well with Jetta. Yeah, so I think the addition of uh, nature or other elements also make it less predictable. You know? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, so I, I think Mercedes needs to change. Now they rely so much on the car being so low. Uh, if you look at the cars, oh, Red Bull is a little bit, you know, elevated. Um, higher. Elevated, yeah. Huh. Just because it, it it uses the air underneath the car, the air underneath the car, as well as on top, on of, top the car, of the car. Which it should. Yes. But uh, the Mercedes relies more on the air on top of the car. Huh. So Interesting. it's a tiny little bit different. That's, that's the that, it, that ingenuity it? of Adrian Newer uh, as the... Well, they improved upon Mercedes' failed zero-pod design on the side the side pods so yeah i think they do incorporate more under and then it comes back up over the back wheel, yeah. wheels to the lane yeah we That's gotta awesome. investigate a little bit more on the car design this year because i haven't really looked too much into it we looked a little bit but not too that's much amazing to me I, I love that i think that's so interesting let me add two points here first it's so much better to talk you know a subject when hilton knows a lot about that Sure. Sometimes he's just, hey, it's about news. He doesn't talk much. But when it's about Formula 1, it's fascinating. Yeah. And second thing, look at thank everything you. he's saying. I'll, 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 I'll take the, you know, thank you. It, okay, sure. It back. It's a bat, yeah. Flex for milk. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> and also, it's amazing, like, how many people <laughs> would really be interested in what he's sharing with us. 
Yeah. You know, like people should. I beat, people should I have beat PK. Yeah. So <laughs> he finished ninth, and I finished sixth. You see well, that six in the in the race. Flexing, shit. You see it? Yeah, exactly. Another Showing flag. off, you know, Brandy. Had a, had a little broken <laughs> wing, you know what I mean? And yeah. Yeah. His no, no, car no, no, was no, a little no, bit. No, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No, but I did. I did over overtook him like four laps to the end of the race. All right. Yeah. Nineteen ninety four. Never forget. This is bigger than creating yeah, self to become about immortal. Piquet Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Piquet yeah. father. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Three times old champion. He cares about making immortals when you have this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, it's, I think that's a good, yes. good stopping point. Yeah. Yeah. It was yes. a lot of fun. Yeah. It was. Take us out. All right. Uh, we will definitely revisit this topic next week. Again, yeah. I will not be here, but... Uh, we have the predictions. Uh, let's add them into the comments. And uh, for all the viewers and listeners out there, please uh, add your uh, P1, P2, P3 of who you think are going to, uh, who are going to place or qualify uh, for this next uh, next Formula One race. Um, again, hit that like button, subscribe, comment, share to your friends. It all helps. A little bit by little bit. We appreciate it. And if you want to particip participate on our fantasy thing, we, yeah. uh, send us a comment and then we can send you an invite and then you can create three teams to participate on our, uh, our league. little league that uh, we pay nothing if anybody wins. So, but It's just for yeah. fun, bragging rights mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yes. Uh, that's fun. Yeah, that's a good idea. Good, good suggestion. All yeah. right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. See you next week.